And now please stay quiet until we start. I mean, another three minutes, I will open the session for people to join us, okay? So maybe you can start, Florence. Okay, let's start. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It is my pleasure to welcome you for this All Atlantic Marine Research Infrastructure Workshop. AA Marinet is a joint action that was developed by an international working group in the context of the EU funded project CSA Encore. We hope that today inspires ideas and discussions around the way we can build this network to facilitate access and promote the sharing of marine research infrastructures within the Atlantic Ocean research community. This workshop is divided in two parts. 
one dedicated to ongoing activities with short talks from AA Marinette partners. And the second part will be dedicated to question and answers from the audience. Uh, short operational information during the first part and all along this workshop, please use the Q&A box for those connected with Doom to ask your questions. And these will be addressed in the stakeholder session. I'm now leaving the floor to Jose Montino from the Earth Center, who is among other responsibilities in the field of Atlantic cooperation leading this joint action. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, just we start here. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry because that we have we are having now several events at the same time here. We are in the in the Azores right now in the theater. I welcome everybody. And uh, more important, I'm seeing a lot of very no well-known faces here with me. I hope you all can start to talk in and, and asking questions later on. So my part will be very simple now. We'll discuss, I mean, just a small presentation of the All Atlantic 2021. Okay, so just a second. Okay, so Amarinet is, a, I mean, Amarinet is a composed for a group of presentations, uh, sorry, a group of, uh, I mean, initiatives grouped together under the same umbrella. You know, the three main parts are the thematic areas, networking, the web portal, and then I left for the end the development managed group and the community group, because they will be the more important for our meeting today. Okay. And uh, so we start in this development and managed group. Uh, what we want from them is to get their knowledge, their information, and their experience to set up a group that will design and help implementation of the web portal, also to oversee and evaluate activities and ensure involvement of the all Atlantic Ocean community that I hope it starts today. One of the main outcomes of this development and managed group is, uh, is the guidelines for optimizing the use and sharing of research infrastructures. I mean, later today, we will, we will hear more about the web portal. I mean, it, Jean Vitorino introduced the web portal where all the information on, on go and planet activities at sea will be shared with others. I mean, we also start with a, a very uh, basic uh, website soon, uh, but then we have the full web portal where you can really share all the information. Specifically, one of these case studies uh, that we will be sharing is the ship time sharing op cooperation opportunity that, I mean, João Vitorino will talk about also. And then the third part, the third big part of the uh, Marinette is the thematic areas networking. Plankton imaging, Itapina, Coast observation, AA Coast Net. I hope you had time to meet, to, to, to participate in that Coast Net side event yesterday and polar research infrastructure as well. So going on, what we want from the Marinet is to create an open network that build upon existing capacities. So the idea is to build upon initiatives and projects, but what we want is to aggregate, to add value I mean, all these parts. You know, the more links are connected, the better. I mean, there will be less uh, cost, uh, transaction costs, and it'll be easier for us to, to provide a long-term inclusive mm -hmm. forum for sharing infrastructures in the Atlantic area. <clears throat> but all that will depend only in the engagement of the different partners and stakeholders. <clears throat> Amarinet, we hope you create the necessary consultation mechanism and dialogue structures to be the, this long last empowering uh, sharing network. So, I mean, go a little bit further on this network for collaboration. Amarinet is a multi stakeholders network. The idea is to promote tools uh, to support collaborative uh, initiatives and promote transnational access we are targeting three main types of stakeholders, the development and managed group, 
the community group and the intermediate and final users. The development and managed group will be most linked with the development of one or, or more of these activities. Community group, the operators, will be the ones that really help us to, to develop and share the guidelines. And of course, we are targeting society. For sure, you have intermediate and final users that we use, I mean, the outcome of this network. So, I mean, I, I, I did a lot of work on, on network analysis and it's important to understand. I mean, I've been already contacted uh, this week. I mean, people asking, well, we we'll have a single network. I mean, this network, you take over national networks. How will we organize ourselves? So the idea is to test different topologies, these images. Uh, were taken from uh, a very interesting report from OECD. I mean, of course, we can have loose connections uh, within countries. We can uh, have central coordination. I mean, maybe we can share this central coordination. After all, the idea is to have a combination of uh, dialogue and collaboration structures that could help us share uh, the infrastructures. So we, we do not want to substitute any existing network. We do not want to compete with any network. We want to provide a forum. I mean, uh, let's say we want to convene existing networks or maybe future networks to engage with, with each other through uh, Marinet. You know, a little bit of my experience, I just share very briefly this slide. I mean, everything related to networks, what we have to do, what we have to do is take care of the network design, the network membership, who we will invite, who you want to invite, I mean, who will be invited through other organizations, the size, I mean, and diversity of each one of these nodes, how these nodes will link up in terms of density, autonomy, and also how can we negotiate our central position and have some status in the network as a convener. Actually, what we will try to do is orchestrate I mean, uh, a vast uh, range of research infrastructure on, on the Atlantic. The, the final objective is for us to increase and let's say coordinate the output of this network. This is very important for us to try to coordinate. And maybe oh, everything that I'm saying will be uh, with more elaborated by João and by other speakers, including Moacir. So uh, what we start to do now is a kind of, uh, we already started actually to map the existing infrastructures. I mean, but we have to go beyond, I mean, the very well known research infrastructures in the Atlantic uh, uh, Ocean. We have to go down some levels and even try to connect very, very local infrastructures that could help in a kind of a concerted way and a coordinated way to contribute for this large scale network that we are envisaging for uh, Marinette. And all that because it's very important for, to have social, societal impact. So what we, have, we are doing is not only to link the research infrastructures, maybe even more important is to show the relevance and to show how can we work together to achieve maximum uh, social and, uh, uh, impact. So we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. I mean, we need to link up human resources, I mean, research infrastructure, maybe industry together with us. We have to work a lot on some of with the partners in terms of knowledge transfer, capacity building, technology transfer. So, so for that, we are just starting today is the very first step of a long process for, for creating these guidelines and bring all the people together. And maybe uh, just to give you a flavor of what we are planning for the future, we pretend we uh, will have uh, several workshops, we have some one-to-one -one meetings, and finally we start to link up together in a distribution list so we can advance together in creating this large scale uh, network of research infrastructures on the Atlantic. So I stop sharing, I now João, Sorry for the noise, but now, João, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. We, 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 
we have uh, Moacir first. Oh, so sorry, say, sorry, yes, sorry. We will Absolutely give sorry. a short yeah, presentation yeah. about the genesis of, of the network yeah, as yeah. Uh, a yeah, member the of the genesis. expert group. The yeah. genesis, I, I love <laughs> this. <laughs> I love Thank you. I will share my screen. Yeah, okay. Uh, Are you seeing? Yeah. Yes, yes. So thank you, uh, José Florence, for the invitation to, to present some, uh, some history about the uh, All Atlantic Marinette and talk about the genesis. I'm really happy to be here, seeing all those faces, healthy faces is important today, and uh, old and new colleagues. Uh, in fact, it's a very important initiative, and I'm, I'm glad to be part of so uh, why 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 you need all Atlantic Marinette? First, I think that's clear that we cannot deal with uh, or manage what we do not know. So uh, we need to know about ocean dynamics, about ocean uh, benefits, and so on. Ocean blue economy, and to know about the ocean, we need uh, marine infrastructure. But uh, it's expensive. It's expensive. Not only the equipment and the ship time, maybe the most expensive uh, item in, in, in marine infrastructure, but also to construct to promote capacity building. It's a long-term process and it spends a lot of money. So the idea uh, with Marinette is to put the people together and trying to share their, their, their effort and their difficulties and their concern. That's why we thought about Marinette. In fact, what you're seeing now is the result of a huge science diplomacy effort had by the European Commission, the European Union, that started 10 years ago, more or less. We start with Gaui statement 2013 and the Belen statement in 2017 and uh, some uh, additional bilateral agreement that uh, may, may, may be, uh, maybe, maybe say some, uh, some challenger uh, concerning the ocean uh, diplomacy, diplomacy for sciences, science for diplomacy. Uh, we have discussed that uh, yesterday, and uh, we need more and more that uh, in, uh, in the joint action. Marinette will not be different. We should force that kind of discussion, and sure, uh, Anchor is, is, is here to do that. Uh, we, we start to discuss about Marinette in 2019, but uh, I would say that uh, we really face to face uh, uh, discussed about that. Yes, we did a face to face just, just before the pandemic in February in Brussels. Uh, and I would say that in that time, we really take away to, to improve and to think about Marinette. We put together 14 experts from, from 12 Atlantic countries, and uh, we start to take a look on what could be the main challenge and uh, what could be the existing initiative. In that process, we identify major gaps and major recommendations from different uh, topics in marine infrastructure and marine uh, observations. And this was really the, the tipping point, in my opinion, for the, the process when we, we took some, some core about the ideas and the specific uh, ways that you could uh, go through. But what are the main steps? Uh, very, very quickly, uh, we will implement a web portal. Information communication is really a big challenge. So we, we saw that uh, during the, the Coastal Net side event yesterday. So it's very, very important. João Vitorino must show us how you can do that, how we are planning to do that. We are promoting the studies case. Uh, and in fact, uh, the final output of uh, all those studies, study case uh, should be 
the recommendations and some kind of a guideline for sharing infrastructures. We, we will learn with this study case. And we, we work with three network groups, with three initiatives, pilot actions, coastal observation, pelagic imaging, and polar research. That I think that we will learn more about that uh, in the next presentation. So uh, this is the same slide that Jose showed us. Uh, I'm not going to, to pass through that, but uh, I will say that the web portal is really very, very important because anybody, anywhere, anytime, we will be able to access what is, is going on on the Atlantic observation. And the most important, what is planning, is being planning for the next activities. But I would like to say that a uh, few words uh, about the thematic areas, the genesis of thematic areas, not really the thematic areas uh, structure uh, uh, themselves, because we will see uh, soon, but about the ideas behind these thematic areas. The first one is the coast net. Uh, this is really new, in my opinion. This is innovation in research and innovation, I would say. As far as I know, it's the first time that we put together different national level uh, coastal observing uh, network together for the first time. And uh, this is also a very fruitful and very, I would say, very important because we will fill a historical gap, a historical gap between open and coastal uh, observations. So we start to talk on the same language. We start to, to, to promote coastal open ocean connective as in that example that I told, I bring brought to you, uh, strong uh, boundary correction, uh, current, current acting in, along the coast and influencing the, the living community and the shelf and the coastal area. So this kind of connections is, is very important. And uh, this network will bring not only to put all the coastal community together, but also to make this link between offshore and coastal observation. The second one is plankton imaging. I'm not... Uh, uh, spend time here saying uh, how important plankton is for the food chain and biogeochemistry, ocean biogeochemistry. But what seems very interesting is uh, the, the, the nice set of emerging technology that you have now. It, so you can uh, have a, a, a high potential for innovation in this kind of initiative. And one, one uh, other uh, thing that it's important is to bring all those uh, procedures in uh, opera, operational state. So this, I think that Heine should, should more discuss more about that in, in, on his presentation. And the next one is the polar research is infrastructure, the last network that you are, we are promoting because it's really expensive, it's far away, it's really expensive, it's really hard to do. So although you have SCAR and although you have SUS and so on, and we, have, we still have a lack of uh, not sub-cooperation polar research. So we can, we can do best and more for this kind of cooperation, not sub-cooperation, Antarctica and Antarctica. So I think that Nicole will discuss about that. We show some ideas about uh, uh, what are going uh, on in the, this network. So thank you very much. This is only some uh, issues, it's, it's only some uh, few histories we would say about the genesis of uh, our Atlantic Marinette. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Moacir. Uh, we are now entering into details of activities with a presentation from Joao, who will talk about uh, the web portal just mentioned by Moisir and uh, the potential for articulation of observations activities in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Just before that, a quick reminder for an information for those who just joined us. In case you have questions, please use mm -hmm. the Q&A box in Zoom. 
and we will uh, address those questions in in the second part of of the of this workshop. Thank you. Go ahead, Joao. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. I, I hope you you can see my screen. Is it yes. okay? Okay. Perfect. So uh, thank you, Florence, and thank you, Jose, for this opportunity to explain very briefly uh, this initiative that is being conducted uh, in the uh, under the umbrella of the uh, Marinet, uh, the, the development and implementation of a web portal to unlock the potential for articulation of observation activities in the Atlantic Basin. Well, there are many reasons to articulate the, our observation actions, of course, to expand uh, science, um, also to optimize the different observation efforts, if possible, by reducing also uh, costs, uh, to improve uh, the ways that our observations can support the operational forecasting by adding new data to, uh, to feed the simulation models, and also to um, help or provide uh, additional information that is key to support uh, a number of activities that develop during crisis at sea. There are uh, presently many portals that um, present um, the observations and uh, that that are being collected in the Atlantic and in the other areas existence. Uh, one well-known example is the Ocean Ops uh, web portal. Uh, I should uh, probably focus the fact that many of these web portals but uh, either focus on the, uh, the to present the available data and the, uh, the programs of observation that are being developed by long-term collaborations or uh, by sustained programs, or uh, are focusing on the uh, mechanisms for interaction for establish these long-term observations. And uh, they are uh, largely biased towards the scientific communities, uh, the research community, and also the operational forecasting community. So uh, this more or less established the, the scenario where we have uh, placed this development of the new web portal. We think that there are many opportunities to collaborate that are lost simply because we frequently don't know each other and don't know what we are uh, doing each other. Uh, an example of a very interesting collaboration that we followed in during last year during the Atlanta 2, 2 Med experiment a very interesting collaboration uh, in uh, putting together sail drones, uh, shape observations, uh, fixed platform, but that almost missed not to happen because we, uh, for a, a long time, did not uh, uh, know about each other. And we also think that there are uh, many op other opportunities to collaborate that are lost simply because we belong to different communities. We are in the academia or research uh, institutes communities. We are infrastructure operators. We are on the blue economy sectors, on the crisis response sectors, or we are uh, environmental agencies. All these partners can uh, or are eventually doing uh, observations in the ocean, but simply don't know each other and don't communicate each other. So the idea for this new web portal, the IMRNet web portal, was to really focus on the articulation of actions. This is, this is not intended to be a portal to provide access to data or to show all the data that, has, uh, that is available in the, in the region. Uh, although we can, in specific case, for example, in the support operational crisis, provide a platform to rapidly uh, exchange data. But this is not the core. The core is the articulations. And we want to in this way, provide a comprehensive view of the Atlantic space and what kind of observations are uh, being uh, collected in the in the spirit, in the tailor to uh, boost the articulations and also uh, to in, uh, insert or to introduce some uh, tools that can, uh, from the articulations efforts and from the collection that, that is established, be uh, de developed uh, to a more comprehensive uh, articulation and uh, long term program. So the main idea is, is to agilize the identification of the actions and the communication between partners. For example, by uh, introducing, uh, by giving emphasis to the ongoing and planned uh, actions in a not too far uh, time window and focusing relatively short windows, uh, windows so that the uh, users can really see what is going on. For example, by reducing to uh, the register um, by a, one single register per observation action and separating between what is a permanent observation effort and what, what is a short-term observation uh, effort like a cruise. 
and by simplifying the, uh, the registry uh, of the observation actions. And we also wants to improve this interaction between the different communities. And one way is, for example, to separate between what are observation programs and actions that can be uh, discussed in the more uh, uh, longer term, and what is the uh, uh, actions that can uh, be useful to uh, support operational crisis management. And for this, we need to have a very, very fast communication between the, uh, the, the, the actors. And we want to establish one single point uh, of contact per action. So, of course, we will uh, try to provide to the users this view uh, of the areas of the Atlantic with the different uh, um, activities going on by uh, showing the regional areas where a number of activities and number of infrastructures are included by showing the different areas where the uh, ship's ob observations are, uh, are, are being done or by gliders observations and by uh, having a time window of uh, one, one year or two years, but uh, by separated by segments of one month. So the user can really see what during that month or during the period of interest is going on. And uh, of course, this view is extended to the old, to the global ocean basin, Atlantic basin. We want to, the user to, to be able to select the area of interest, to focus on the area of interest, and then to show, for example, in the area that combines uh, ocean observations with coastal observations, to be able to explore what is going on there and how we can interact, for example, or in this case, for example, for the, uh, the coastal ocean areas, this uh, leads to a very uh, dense information, where we can include the um, observations that are conducted by the research community, but also we want to include the observations that are conducted by the other communities. For example, this opportunity uh, observations by, uh, done by uh, merchant ships, for example, or uh, uh, observations measurements conducted by aquaculture, offshore aquaculture uh, um, actors or uh, energy sector uh, uh, partners, uh, and also uh, the possibility to have insert some observations that are conducted by citizen science initiatives. So this is an ambition uh, program. This requires the engagement of a broad community. How to ensure this engagement? Well, this uh, Atlantic, all Atlantic communities can uh, be the first step to form the initial core of a community group. But we need also to profit from the fact that the research infrastructures connect directly with the national and local communities. And so they can pass the measures to these uh, communities. And also we can profit from other international forum. What is key here is to show what, why we need to articulate and what is the benefit that we gain. And so we can show a number of uh, cross win-win uh, examples of this cross uh, uh, communities articulation. For example, but the articulation between uh, operators of facilities and uh, research institutions to provide support in the case of a autonomous system that has been uh, damaged or that is a problem uh, offshore, or for example, articulating between operators of uh, offshore aquacultures that are doing some measurement but require uh, some uh, observations in the global area, and prof they, they can profit from the fact that there are some actions in this global area, and the global uh, the, the research community can profit from the fact that there are observations in these aquacultures, and of course during the support of the crisis at sea. The, uh, the development that has been following now is that we are starting now uh, the discussions for the design of the web portal and for this uh, phase we will uh, strongly need uh, feedbacks and the interaction with the uh, large community so here the community group to be established will be uh, asked to uh, collaborate in this co-design of course we have this implementation of the web portal where the maintain the, the is maintaining the uh, interaction with the community group during the phase that after the implementation of running the web portal we will uh, try to integrate new uh, elements for the community group and here i see that we can develop a strong articulation with the thematic areas and uh, network initiatives uh, to uh, explore uh, some of the feedback that comes from these uh, discussions and we will have also these uh, case studies that uh, of ship, ship and, uh, remote and uh, autonomous vehicles interactions that we can use as uh, to test uh, the web ca case functionalities. And finally, we have this evaluation of the uh, of the websites by uh, getting the feedback from the community groups. I think this is a very short overview of the of the web portal. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Joao, for this uh, presentation of uh, the most uh, ambitious uh, activities of AA Marinette, and we hope that most of stakeholders present today will 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 join this uh, network and will benefit from from uh, from this output and especially articulation of observations in their respective regions. We now uh, have a presentation on the case study already mentioned about ship time sharing and thematic coordination of scientific cruises. And Joe uh, is also giving this presentation. Together with Moas here. Okay, thank you very much again. Uh, here, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much again, Florence. Uh, just to uh, give a brief fr fr uh, framework of this, uh, this uh, initiative, this, in fact, uh, tends to explore a showcase for one of the levels of, uh, um, of interaction, of, of alignment of the uh, research infrastructures. Uh, and this uh, showcase, in fact, this case study will focus the possibility of a change of ship time and autonomous systems, um, focusing the um, possibility of um, monitoring and cooperation activities uh, and opportunities. And we will we'll use uh, already planned uh, um, actions, uh, ship operations, um, to um, from different uh, partners in the Atlantic area, and then we are coordinating these efforts, and we are discussing among a, a, a community these efforts in order to emphasize this uh, the case studies uh, uh, goal objectives. So the main goal is to provide some back no uh, background knowledge to potential, uh, potentially expand this uh, sharing mechanism to other areas and other communities after the end of the joint action. So we have, I, I separate this presentation in the discussions that we have, some of them for the Eastern Atlantic area, others from the, for the Western Atlantic area. So I, I will just briefly present for the Eastern Atlantic area. We had, we had a number of discussions um, by September or October with uh, uh, several partners. Um, uh, during this uh, the 2020, there are two scenarios that we have uh, put, the possibility of having a, an articulation action in, the, in Cap Verde um, uh, by, the, by the, the fall and uh, start winter 2021, and the possibility in 2022 to profit also some uh, potentially planned uh, missions to have a collaborative action in Angola. Uh, very recently, there has been the, the discussion about the possibility of having already this year a, a collaborative action in Angola. So this is very recent and we, we need to discuss this, but this must be confirmed in the, in the following months. So for the potential collaborative action in Cap Verde, this has been the object of the discussions that we have had more detailed discussions. So during September, October, uh, the community of partners that has presented here, so partners from Cap Verde, partners from uh, Germany, from uh, France, from uh, Spain and from Brazil and also Portugal, uh, have discussed uh, what possibilities are, uh, were opened uh, to have these actions uh, uh, in September, November, 2021. These discussions were somewhat delayed, at least from our side, were delayed and during this end of 2020, uh, beginning of 2021, due to the evolution of the COVID crisis uh, that raised some uncertainties about what, what we could do. But we, now we have uh, resumed the, the, the discussions and the discussions are ongoing because things are becoming more clear about the, the COVID evolution. Uh, so a number of institutions, infrastructure were identified in September, October last year uh, that could be involved in these uh, cooperative actions. And we started to have a first overview of for these infrastructures and for these uh, systems, what kind of uh, possibilities they offered, uh, like, for example, the, the kind of characteristics of the vessels and also characteristics of the equipment involved and the possibilities to articulate with other sensors to have teams on board and so on. So um, in the discussions, of course, we started to, to uh, evaluate the potential uh, scientific objectives and also the, the, how the uh, infrastructure articulate. This is still open, uh, the discussion is still open. One possible scenario is to profiting one of these the, the ships, the Don Carlos Primeiro ship, uh, 
that will do a transit from Portugal to Cabo Verde and then profit this entering in the area to uh, conduct a large scale survey that could characterize the interaction of the uh, um, general uh, uh, circulation, uh, uh, large scale circulation in the area with the, uh, with the Cabo Verde uh, archipelago and also to explore some the connections between the continental inputs to the archipelago area, namely related to this large uh, uh, filament, uh, plowing filament of Cape Blanc and so on. So this is still very open. And this kind of uh, articulation of a large scale survey with uh, more local coastal observations could eventually uh, allow uh, interaction, for example, with the Cap Verde Ocean Observatory Marine that is uh, located in the area that the area points, but also with the activities that are being conducted in the near the, the, the islands, so in the coastal environment of the islands, or in these seamount structures uh, that are uh, in the archipelago area. So again, this is still very uh, open in the discussion, so we must to see for the different partners involved, what are the more in, important uh, um, objectives in, in the uh, mechan articulation mechanisms. And now I will pass to Moacir to explain. Thank you, João. Um, yes, in fact, despite the COVID, we, we have a, a, a busy time in the western boundary. Those are some planned and today confirmed cruiser surveys uh, along the western boundary, tropical Atlantic and the subtropical Atlantic and uh, Antarctic. Uh, the first one, uh, we have just uh, finished a successful cruiser in the Amazon River Ocean Continuum, together with the German colleagues from IOW, uh, Marin Voss from the German side, and myself from the Brazilian side. Uh, if you, you move to the center, uh, uh, we are going to have the Pirata Brazil Cruise Survey. Uh, I think that most of you know about the Pirata. And we will have start the Pirata because it was uh, stopped due to, to pandemic and we will have start in July, August this year. Uh, we will have a very exciting cruiser also in August, September. It's called Amazon Mix together with French colleague from IRB. Uh, Ariane Cochilahui uh, is the PI from the French uh, side and myself from the Brazilian side. We, we will move into the, the back panels. We will have to the left side the Tara Amazon experiment. And almost the same time that we have Amazon X. Amazon X will be uh, performed with many different uh, colleagues and Tara as well from different countries. Uh, and uh, in particular to the Atlanteco group from Daniele Iuduconi that is organizing that together uh, with us and the Brazilian side. And uh, we will have the second survey of Mephisto is uh, one of the project uh, on the scope of the Brazilian uh, Antarctic program. So you will come back to the Brazil Malvinas confluence and uh, to see the biocomplexity of eddies and meso and sub -meso structures and also to make a lot of uh, measurements along the Drake pass Passage. A little bit hard, but we got that uh, last time. I hope that we will we, we do the same this year. And all those uh, efforts, Mephisto, for example, you have a nice cooperation with the people from Aeron uh, Centro, uh, German colleagues, and all, all this study case, we will learn more about uh, how can you share time, ship time, how can you share infrastructure, and to use all those initiatives to, to perform, to, to produce a guideline, a guideline about uh, uh, how can we improve the cooperation, how can we improve uh, autonomous vehicles uh, sharing, and uh, anyway, uh, how can we improve the infrastructure sharing in, in, in those uh, activities. I think that that is the overall view and uh, we are open to questions and please let's move on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much to both of you for uh, this input on ship time sharing. Uh, participants are welcome to ask questions and answers using the Q&A box in Zoom. Uh, and now we are entering into 
transatlant support to transatlantic network. Uh, as you know now, AA Marinet uh, is providing a tool, which is the web portal, uh, a case study on ship time sharing, but we also support the development of transatlantic network focusing on specific uh, thematic. The first one is on coastal observing systems, AA Coastnet, and Laurent uh, from IFREMER, Laurent Delaunay from IFREMER will give uh, this presentation. Thank you, Laurent. So I open my microphones and I will switch my presentation to presentation mode. And when it will be okay, tell me please. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so good uh, hello everybody. Nice to be there. I just want to thank uh, first the All Atlantic uh, Conference. Uh, and as well, the uh, AA Marinette uh, actions. So I'm going to talk about the AA Coastnet uh, joint action, that is the All Atlantic Coastal Observing and Technology Network. Uh, I am uh, animating this uh, joint actions with uh, Moisir Arroyo, who is, who is from the Universidad Federal de Pernambuco in Brazil. And so myself, Laurent Delaunay, I am from IFREMER, in France, in Brest, more precisely. And I am as well coordinating the Jericho ARI, that is to say the Joint European Research Infrastructures for Coastal Observation. Uh, so as it has been well explained, the AA Coastnet Joint Action is, as I, 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 I wrote, encapsulated in the AA Marinette Action, that is the All Atlantic Marine Research, Research Infrastructures. And this ACOSNET uh, joint actions is a network dedicated to marine coastal observation with the countries part of the Belém and Galway statements. So we are part of these joint actions. We have part of these joint actions, Brazil, Argentina, South Africa, West Africa, Cabo Verde, and Europe. And for each country, we have some coastal uh, observing networks participating. Like in Brazil, we have three of them, that is to say SimCosta, that is the Brazilian Coastal Monitoring Systems. We have PN Boya, the National Bureau Programs. We have MIPRO Initiative, Best Practices in Ocean Observations. In Argentina, this is IMAC, a low-cost boyos and station monitoring network that is participating. In South Africa, we have SMCRI, Shallow Marine and Coastal Research Infrastructures, and SAYAB, that is the South African Institute for Aqu Aquatic Biodiversity. In West Africa, this is PROPAO, the Coastal Sea Surface Temperature Networks. In Cabo Verde, that is the Cabo Verde Ocean Observatory, that is to say the CVOO, that is part of the OSCM, the, infrastructure, the Ocean Science Centers of Mindelo. And in Europe, this is, as I already mentioned, Jericho ARI, the Joint European Research Infrastructures for Coastal Observations. And we have the chance to be supported by AtlantOS and Cost Predict initiatives. So the main objectives of our Coastnet Joint Actions is to potentially work and share best practices on platform operation, for example, on platform operation and metrology. We should as well work about technology in order to evaluate needs and gaps. And as well, the, the topic of data is very important as long as we are producing and sharing data to make science, to make science this is very important to have some very um, harmonized format, some banking systems, and of course, a very efficient data access. Uh, country initiatives and needs that could be linked uh, and needs that could be linked to EOS Technological Forum, the, AC, the Alliance for Coastal Technology in US, and of course the UN Ocean Decade Coastal Predicts. We are going as well to evaluate how to uh, realize some transnational access and virtual access among all these coastal networks. We, should, uh, we are going to, to uh, implement some training activities in, on different topics, 
like on metrology, platform operations, intercomparison of existing sensors, easy access sensors development, et cetera. And in uh, as a, a very important objective, we will establish a perspective for a long-term transatlantic coastal network addressing science topics, as for example, the land sea continuum, as Moise already talked a little bit about. So the joint action is divided in four main tasks. The first one is dedicated to organize workshop, uh, our COSNET workshop, as we already did yesterday as a side event. And task them, and we will, uh, I, I can already say that we will organize the second workshop uh, at the end of 2021 or in the beginning of 2022, where, where we will take more time in order to elaborate more uh, deeply uh, co collaborations. Task two is dedicated to uh, trainings, and there is a, already a, a, a specific topic that is uh, targeted for training. Uh, there is a training that should happen uh, about how to build up some low-cost sensors, that is to say, some nearly do-it-yourself sensors organized by Argentina. In task three, uh, we talked a lot about it, and it's a very important point, how to share information, that is to say, to build up a website with all Atlantic coastal observations. It will be part, I'm sure, of the uh, AA Marinette website. The fourth task is, as I mentioned in the main objectives, to build up the perspective for a long-term transatlantic coastal network. But what's about long-term objectives? If we go further, the, uh, the, uh, the Encore pro project, so the uh, coastal Draft Action, we should promote a better scientific knowledge about the links and exchange between offshore and inshore coastal regions. We, we should try to connect, align, and maximize the coastal observation effort already existing in both, both edge of the tropical and southern Atlantic. We should induce the use of common guidelines that lead to the improvement of the best observation practices. We should try to keep a close link with open ocean observing networks in the whole Atlantic basins to promote cooperation and cheap time equipment sharing. We should as well encourage and identify new source of phones. This is the key point in order to be sustainable. And as well to so new source of phones for maintenance and especially those made available in calls for proposal from international and transnational funding agencies. And we should contribute to the predicting global coastal oceans toward a more resilient society as proposed for the United Nation decades to follow the UN Ocean Decades Implementation Plan. So finally, uh, I, I, I take the advantage of this presentation to give you the key elements that were targeted yesterday during the ACOSNET side event. And you, you can see that most of these key elements were already part of our uh, medium term objective and long term objective. So yesterday, the keywords that come up, came up with all the coastal networks that did their, their presentation of strength and, and, uh, and gaps is best practices. We should, we should, we should uh, share best practices uh, from one um, uh, coastal network to the other, because all of them have some best practices to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to share. As well, we should try to organize some knowledge, knowledge exchange, like training and a specific uh, sentence that one mentioned yesterday that I, I like a lot is to teach the cultures of planning and documenting. And as well, for knowledge exchange, we, can, or, or we should organize some personal exchange program. Another important topic that came up from everybody was metrology. The metrology aspect uh, is very important and we should try to organize a sort of transatlantic metrology network uh, because it's, this is the key for quality data and of course for good science. And in Europe, we are starting to build up a European metrology network. It's, it's starting, it's, the kickoff meeting will happen at the end of June. So I will take advantage of this, uh, of this um, activity to try to uh, to bounce and maybe to uh, to manage to organize some things uh, to, uh, 
in, in a transatlantic uh, aspect. And as well, uh, the, the aspect of local census was mentioned many times. So we have a specific uh, training action that should be planned uh, and realized during the uh, cost standard actions. And as well, there were, there were some uh, all, all the idea to try to build up some common database first at the country level for the country who are not very well organized and of course at a more global level. And the, the aspect of financial support for maintenance and expansion was mentioned many times. And as well, uh, there were some very interesting comments in the chat to share contact, to build a shared space for presentation and links to common interest and publication and so on. So it will be made through the uh, ARACOSNET website. So thank you very much for your attention. And please, please join ARACOSNET. You can use my own email address, laurent.deloni at ifremer.fr, or the Moisir's uh, address email, that is moat.uhpe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you, Laurent. Uh, we will switch now to a very different type of infrastructures, which are uh, less EV infrastructures. We, we, we talked a lot about research vessels so far and uh, EV uh, infrastructures. Now we go to plankton imaging uh, with uh, Rainer Kiko from um, Sorbonne University. Yes, thank you very much. So I will share my screen and I hope you can see my presentation. Yep, it works. Yes, okay, very good. Um, yeah. Thanks for everyone to, uh, for joining. I want to uh, talk about the Itapina action, the Imagine Imaging the Atlantic, a pelagic imaging network approach, uh, the network which I lead together with Rubens Lopez from uh, Brazil and Margot Noyon from uh, South Africa, and which is also uh, our, our Marinette uh, pilot study. So what I want to just quickly do is uh, explain what pelagic imaging is. I don't think it's so complicated. Actually, uh, running a vessel is uh, much more complicated than doing pelagic imaging. But uh, still, uh, I want to explain a little bit what the goals are of this approach. Uh, I want to explain why we need Itapina and what the goals of Itapina are. So um, if you see this beautiful image, or these many, many beautiful images arranged uh, in a very beautiful way, uh, you see a lot of pelagic or organisms. And uh, if you just take a look at these pictures, you can, you can already extract a lot of information from the ocean, especially if you know where these uh, pictures were taken and in what uh, environment or context they were taken. But also, especially from the images, you can learn a lot. You can, for example, see from a green color, you can normally uh, 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 reveal the information that this is something uh, having chlorophyll, so fixing uh, some carbon, or if, it, uh, if you have some bigger critters, then they normally are predators. And you can also, when you put a scale to it, you can, of course, also measure the size of these organisms and thereby get an information about the biomass that this uh, organism holds, and therefore also some, some important information about the, the ecosystem and its possible role in the ecosystem. And this role can be can be many many different roles. I just want to uh, highlight two different roles. One is, of course, in the marine food web that you can see here <coughs> uh, exemplified. Um, you have uh, the phytoplankton at the base, then you have zooplankton, and finally you have fish. And uh, yeah, from imaging uh, the different components, you can learn about this network. You can also uh, get an idea about how much fish. Uh, the, the, the whole network uh, can, can support. And so uh, learning and imaging uh, the ocean actually can give you an idea about uh, potential harvest and uh, enable you to better manage fish stocks. So that's the one reason to do pelagic imaging. The other uh, thing that we see if we actually do pelagic imaging, so here I show a short video from the tropical Atlantic, 100 meter depths, is that there is not, of course, only uh, plankton, zooplankton or phytoplankton. You see a few moving here, but most of what you see here is actually uh, just passively sinking particles, something we call marine snow, and also fecal pellets. You can see them here now in, in a close-up uh, here on the left side, the marine snow, on the right side, fecal pellets. And these are very, very important components of what we can image 
because um, it's components of the biological pump. Uh, the aggregates, marine snow and the fecal pellets, they will sink in the ocean and they will export carbon to the deep sea. And that's an, uh, a crucial component of the, the global climate system because uh, nowadays humans, they uh, like release about 0.28 petamol of carbon per year. And the biological pump exports about 0.8 petamol carbon per year. And you can see that if we would not have this biological carbon pump, we would actually not be in a warming climate, we would already be in a hot climate. So um, yeah, that's uh, why it is uh, so crucial to actually focus on this very small critters uh, in the ocean and get a quantitative view of these organisms. And that is, of course, uh, long recognized. Uh, what I've shown you is this nothing completely new and uh, uh, therefore um, many uh, essential ocean variables are related to this. So you have on the one side particulate matter uh, as an essential biogeochemistry ocean variable, but you also have phytoplankton, zooplankton, fish, and, and mammals, and marine mammals as essential ocean variables. And uh, this is uh, the, the component that we can actually assess uh, using pelagic imaging tools. So it's, it's, a, it's extremely crucial to do pelagic imaging. But why do I say pelagic imaging and not like, let's say, uh, taking nets and, and counting them by hand? Uh, that to some extent was, is what, what was done for, for a long time. And of course uh, it, it was and is a great effort and a usual, uh, useful and crucial effort, but to some extent it also takes much too long. So what, what you see here on the left side is um, the efforts, uh, the, the annual mean mesozooplankton biomass, uh, data collected in about 2000, in 2013 uh, and this uh, uh, figure exemplifies everything that we knew at the time about uh, mesozooplankton biomass in the ocean and every dot is of course a, a huge effort to get this data because you had to go there and you had to to get the net and you had to weigh it or count what is in there and the problem with nets is also that it's integrated sampling so every dot only exemplifies a uh, sample from let's say 100 to 200 meter, uh, zero to 200 meter depths. And yeah, it's a huge effort. So it's, a, it's a great effort, but actually pelagic imaging can be much faster. And this uh, lower map actually shows what we with a, with a few groups are uh, using an underwater vision profiler, several uh, 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 instruments of this kind uh, globally uh, generated in about 10 years of data acquisition. And uh, many dots here, there are many uh, stations covered several times. And uh, what you see, and, and the profiler also goes down to 6,000 meter depth. So we have meter scale resolution of plankton and particle distribution here. And we really have it in situ. So that is, is um, uh, I think, very useful information. And a, a crucial component here is that we actually can digitally process the data and that actually enables a uh, strong speed up of the whole process. So, and there are many other uh, systems now. We also have the zoo stand to analyze multi-net uh, data instead of counting and weighing stuff. Uh, we have the video plankton recorder and underwater vision profiler six, which can actually be mounted on moorings and uh, argo floats and things like that, a, a, a flow cam. Um, Im imaging flow side to board and the planktoscope, which actually now has is, has reduced the cost of, of this kind of observation uh, for small critters to something like thousand US dollars. So it's uh, we have amazing tools, and we do need these different tools because plankton covers a huge size range uh, from from something like micrometers to to centi and decimeters, and the different tools uh, they cover these different. Uh, size ranges. No, no tool can do it alone. And so what I want to say is that pelagic imaging is delivering. Many solutions do emerge, uh, but we also uh, somehow have the problem that each instrument has its own loose user network and that we are not so good yet at, at combining all the information also along the size spectrum. So that's things that we need to do. And so Itapina aims to change this. Uh, so what is Itambina? It's an open access network for pelagic imaging professors, professionals and stakeholders. And uh, what we want to do is to develop common practices of handling the instruments, of handling the data. Uh, we want to share instruments. We also want to share like approaches, ideas, 
And of course, we want to work on data analysis and data aggregation. Uh, we already have uh, a lot of members in, in Itapina from around the Atlantic, as you can see here, but we also want to grow the network, of course. Uh, so the goals for 2021, uh, 22 are actually to start the discussion to consolidate the Itapina network. So you're all invited to join. Uh, to develop networking resources. We will have workshops, uh, we will create a, or have a mailing list, we'll create a website forum for frequently asked questions, and we want to develop a roadmap uh, that uh, should uh, lay out how uh, instrument development and sharing can be done, how data products can be generated, also how skills development can be, can be done, and what values collagic imaging has. Yeah? And uh, for that, we, for example, also have a scientific session at the Astro Aquatic Sciences meeting. So if you are at the meeting, which is online, please have a look at the Imaging, Imaging the Ocean, Pelagic Imaging for a Sustainable Future session. And we will have a workshop directly afterwards on Monday and Tuesday of 28th June and 29th June, where we will uh, discuss further and in a more informal way about uh, these, all these things that I talked about. So please, uh, um, uh, yeah, just join us, uh, send me an email or leave a note in the chat so that I can follow up on this. And uh, the long-term goals of uh, Itapina, which, which uh, you would then sign up for, so to say, is also to improve transnational access to imaging hardware, transnational access to centralized image data management, and the main topic that, that we really want to work on is to get pelagic imaging into an operational state so that the raw data is open access within, let's say, a month of the acquisition or even faster, uh, which is obviously possible due to the digital uh, uh, kind of work we can do now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Trainer. Uh, we will come back to questions from the audience after uh, after the talk from uh, from Nicole. Do not hesitate to use the question and answers box. And Nicole Bibo is from AVI and she's a coordinator of EU Polar Net 2 uh, and other Polar projects uh, at Pipos, but you can you can say more, uh, Nicole. And she will uh, introduce uh, our activity related to polar research infrastructures. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much, Florence. I hope you can hear me and I will share yeah. my screen now. Let me see. Um, so this should be fine. So um, we have, so first of all, thank you for introducing me. Um, I am speaking, we, I'm speaking here on behalf of a large group of polar researchers, um, which are <clears throat> um, working together in the EOLA, EO Polar Net, but also in the European Polar Board. And uh, both organizations have yesterday organized their first workshop on um, polar research and infrastructures. So we are new to this community and uh, our challenge is also to combine here two separately evolving networks. So um, I will give you now a short overview of what we have uh, discussed yesterday and what our plans are for the future. And I will show you also some uh, very successful examples of sharing of polar infrastructures and transnational access to polar infrastructures. So as I said, we had the first workshop yesterday. Um, it was a meeting workshop. So we introduced each other, even if we are a small community and usually very well known, and know each other when we are speaking about both poles, there are always people who don't know each other so well. We started the workshop with introductions to the different polar research programs. We had presentations from Brazil, from South Africa, Canada, and Europe. And then we just uh, showcased some best practice examples for access to infrastructure, for sharing of infrastructure and logistics. We had a very good audience, a very good attendance with 128 registrations and 61 actively participating attendees from 30 different institutes and 25 countries. So there is obviously a lot of interest in the polar research also within the frame of the All-Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. 
I will not go into the polar research programs now, but we'll give you some examples about uh, what we showcased yesterday as best practice examples of access to infrastructures um, and sharing of infrastructures. Um, when we are speaking about the polar regions, even if this is a marine net, I have to also um, focus not only on the marine realm, and that's why I'm starting with maybe the best practice example for sharing of infrastructures you can ever imagine. This is the Interact project, which gives access to um, 60, 89 Interact research stations spanning across the whole Arctic. So if you need an example for a well-working network, here it is. It's not coordinated by us, so I can advertise this um, uh, heavily. Um, it started with a small group of uh, stations as scanned in Scandinavia, and it's now, as you see, spanning the whole Arctic, giving access to researchers, to more than 1,000 researchers during its lifetime already to the different stations in the Arctic, including Russia, US, and Canada. When you speak about polar research, you also should not forget that most of our money goes into logistics. So, um, we, um, especially when we are speaking about the Southern Hemisphere, and you see here a map with the major hubs, which are, uh, we are using to enter the Antarctic. And one of those is South, uh, South America. The other one is South Africa. Both are partners here in the Alliance. And usually we spend more money on logistics than on research. So it's also our interest to, um, develop a better cooperation in logistics. That's for polar research, very important. And we discussed yesterday an example um, of a first task force to optimize logistics who joined forces and implemented a BATA system to chair um, planes, air, uh, berths on ships and also berths on stations. You see here the five uh, partners. This is open to all other interested partners and it is focusing on the Antarctic Peninsula, which is of course close to the Atlantic Ocean. And what we want to avoid is what you see here that eight ships are waiting in front of uh, the um, uh, Antarctic Peninsula to get their people on board, you know, and some of them go back home with empty berths. So now let's come to the marine realm because this is the topic of the workshop and transnational access to the polar regions has a long history. It's a well-established network already. So we have started already in 2007. So the first uh, initiatives was really to develop a joint U European research icebreaker, the Aurora Borealis. This project became too expensive and that's why it failed. It was an S3 project. While we are working on this, uh, we, uh, the Eurofleets projects, which gives access to a research vessel all over the world has started its first period coordinated by Yves Romer. And at that time we had access, we provided access to 18 research vessels, mainly in the Atlantic Ocean and in the Mediterranean Sea. Then Eurofleets 2 followed and uh, on the, by the wish of the European Commission, it included a dedicated polar research work package to develop transnational access to polar research. We gave access to 22 research vessels already in the polar areas, I will show you later, and also to marine equipment. And uh, while as a spin-off, uh, then uh, the Arctic Research Icebreaker Consortium, which gives access to icebreakers in the Arctic Ocean has developed, which is coordinated by the AVI. And in parallel, we have now Eurofleets Plus, and I saw that Neef, the executive uh, manager of this project is also here in the audience, uh, which pr will provide access to 27 research vessels and 12 parts of marine equipment, also including the polar areas. How does the polar fleet look like? Only for your information. This seems very crowded here, the Arctic, but now let's go into more detail. We have the, uh, these ships marked with a yellow uh, bar below are ships from Coast Guards or from a governmental organization who only have a certain time of the year in the Arctic and are heavily influenced by other duties. 
The one in gray are the Russian icebreakers and they are very difficult to access for the moment and most of them are not working for science anymore. And then we have a few vessels left. This is the German Polarstern, to a certain degree the Swedish Odin, and Kronprinz Horkon from Europe. And we have the Asian ones, the Chinese Chulong and the Korean Araon, who work in a different area of the Arctic Ocean. So not a lot. If you look at the Antarctic, it looks even more crowded, but it is even more difficult. Because um, several of these ships who are um, showcased here, and by the way, also the ships from uh, uh, let's say it start like this, are simply logistic vessels. So they only bring equipment to and back from the Antarctic. But there are a few research vessels. And also I have to um, indicate here that also our All Atlantic Partners research vessels are on this map. That's the Agalas II from South Africa, the uh, Almirante Maximiliano from Brazil, and Ara Irisa from uh, Argentina, and of course, uh, Nathaniel S. Palmer from the US. In addition, several European vessels like Polarstern, like Laura Bassi, or the new Sir David Attenborough from the UK, which is not yet in place. All these ships have a problem, but this problem we might use for the All Atlantic Ocean Alliance because they have to shuttle in between two poles. So Polarstern, Sir David Attenborough, Laura Abassi cross the Atlantic Ocean at least twice a year. If you look what polar cruises we have already performed, this is a map from Eurofleets and you see that we have had already some. Eurofleets does not include the really heavy icebreakers as a rise, but it includes ice strengths and vessels and we have performed joint cruises of Greenland, of Iceland and also in the southern hemisphere, which I show you on this map in more detail. We had cruises in the Ross Sea and at the Antarctic Peninsula already with Eurofleets. And this uh, map of the Arctic shows you that uh, we also had now, thanks to Arise, uh, cruises in the Central Arctic Ocean, which are extremely difficult to organize and challenging, especially when it comes to costs. And another good example in this whole polar uh, community is, of course, the biggest Arctic expedition ever, which has been organized by an international consortium. It can be also a very good example for sharing ships. So 20 nations shared the enormous costs of Polarstern for a hundred and for a full year expedition just ended last October. It were uh, 30. The 400 scientists from uh, 20 different nations on board, they chaired the logistics, they chaired the cost, and they shared the science program. And interestingly, due to this international cooperation, we were even able to continue with this expedition during the pandemic. It was challenging, but we could do it. For the Arctic, uh, the ships we are offering within Arise, so the really big ones are shown here. Um, these are also the extremely expensive infrastructure. So we have three European icebreakers who give access. We have two non-European icebreakers, I should stress, from all Atlantic partners. It's the Sukuliak from the US and the Amundsen from Canada. And uh, we also have an industry icebreaker involved. And what I want to show with these slides is that um, the access which is funded by the European Commission is not only limited to Europeans. So US and Canada are fully funded partners in this project because they provide their infrastructure. So, um, and now I would like to summarize a bit what we have discussed yesterday, but I have to show you this super nice map my colleague Gonzalo Vieira prepared for our workshop yesterday, which shows how nicely the Atlantic Ocean connects both poles. The red dots you see on this map are the European stations in the Arctic and in the Antarctic. And this little red dot in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is the place where we should have been if we wouldn't have Corona all today, the Azor Islands. So what did we agreed on? So the outcome is from the first workshop, there is a strong interest uh, in the ANCO between the ANCO partners to increase the collaboration in polar research and infrastructures. The major gap you saw, I showed you really a good community in the Arctic but we do not have it in the Southern Ocean. Uh, 
So we would like to transfer our ideas from Arise, from Eurofleet, and also from the Station Network Interact into the Antarctic, into the Atlantic realm. But for that, we need a joint science plan. That is the major outcome. So we cannot speak about infrastructure sharing without science, appropriate science in the back. That's why we will work on this now. And the key issues we see for infrastructures are improving the coordination, the transnational access, and of course, the interoperability of the vessels and stations. And our biggest problems is, as has mentioned before, the sustainability of the networks, which are well working. So the next steps for us are we will now start to develop joint scientific priorities with our colleagues from Brazil, South Africa, Argentina, and so on. We will implement a core group who will move this forward uh, so that we um, continue and we will certainly have a next meeting in the second half of uh, this year to continue now a bit more with the science planning. And that science planning can work is my last slide here from today. So um, we in Europe underwent this already for the whole European community and developed a, a research program for Europe, also an infrastructure program for Europe and a catalog indicating all European uh, polar infrastructures, which you, which you can find on the European Polar Board website. And we are quite confident that based with this, ex with this experience in the back, we will also be able to identify um, the research needs uh, which we uh, have to define to share our infrastructures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nicole. We are uh, now for th that was an impressive uh, presentation. So we understand that science priority, setting up science priority uh, should be done first. But we also have a lot of experience. You also in the polar research have a lot of experience in sharing infrastructures. So I'm sure we can uh, learn about it for uh, other uh, sharing mechanisms. And you will for sure take part in the drafting of these recommendations for sharing infrastructures, even though that will not target especially polar research. I'm sure we can uh, gain from this. Uh, so jo Jose now will uh, moderate the session. We are just on time for uh, the question and answers. Cool. Thank you. Fantastic presentations. Thank you for all the introduction. We have, a, we have a lot of movement here around the, I mean, the chat box and the WhatsApp as well. I don't even know how to start. Maybe you start by, uh, uh, I mean, a message left by Ozile. Ozile is the director of Labomar, is a, a sonograph marine institute of the state of Ceará, in the state of Ceará. And uh, she said that she, I mean, Labomar has a, a vessel, 23 meters long, 10 days of autonomy, and he can uh, have 10 researchers together, and she's making it available to participate in the network. This is a very good way of starting this. I mean, this networking session, when somebody's already providing, let's say, some infrastructures for us to share. Thank you, Ozilea. She had to sh leave because she will get her first shot of the vaccine. I don't know, in Brazil is something a little bit more difficult sometimes than in Europe, so she couldn't miss. So, I mean, uh, first of all, I'd like to ask you to write your questions on the Q&A now. And if you want to be uh, promoted as a panelist, no, please raise your hand. I will include you as a panelist so we can have, I mean, a face-to-face -face conversation. It's much better than a, Let's say, oh, there's already one raising his hands. Good to know. Oh, this is Eduardo. Okay. So Eduardo, I'll promote you. Eduardo is leading the, just a second. Okay, Eduardo is, I mean, is leading a very interesting, I mean, infrastructure called Tech4C. In, in, so Eduardo, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Let me let me turn on my camera. Okay. So Eduardo, I don't know, I don't know if uh, if 
you I go to change the network because maybe uh, the network is not good enough in this moment. Give me one minute, two minutes. I go to change the network, okay? Okay, good. Because so this network, will... the, the, this connection is not good. Okay, okay. I, I will continue I, I, when I, you come I back. Now. Okay, good. I go to, to change to a better, a better one. Okay, good. So if there is anybody else that wants to participate, I see a lot of people who are leading important, I mean, uh, research infrastructures here. So, I mean, maybe Carlos, maybe other, uh, Philomena. Okay, good. Philomena uh, is from Angola and she's the director of the Institute for Research, Marine and Fisheries Research in Angola. So Filomena, okay, you are panelist now, Filomena. Filomena, can you? Are you there, Filomena? Uh, Probably something happened with the... Okay, so we have another one. So it looks like this context, contest in the TV where people are being called. So now we have uh, Luis Paulo. Luis Paulo, you wanna say something? You are muted. You are muted, Luis. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was okay, good. Okay, good. Out. Good morning to everybody. Or, I mean, good morning for the Eastern countries and good afternoon for the Western ones. So, uh, you know a little bit about, I mean, the uh, uh, Marinette? I know you have import important infrastructures on the Bay of Guanabara in Rio de Janeiro. And it would be interesting for us to know how can we connect with the Amarinet. You know, and Moacir from University of Pernambuco that you know him very well, I know that yes, for a fact. So can, can help us to, to discuss how could you participate? Okay, uh, let me present a little bit about our uh, platform. Uh, in fact, the, the, the name of the project is called Bahia Viva and uh, is a digital platform uh, where we distribute some meteorological oceanographic data and also uh, oceanographic and atmospheric numerical model results, uh, forecasts also too, for the Guanabara, Guanabara Bay region. Uh, Guanabara Bay is a very important bay inside the state of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, you have two refineries, two airports, it's very important in the social and economical context. And the main idea of this platform is not only to disclosure all of the meteorological and atmospheric information, but also to put them available in order to uh, understand a little bit how can we could use this kind of information towards the uh, sustainable development of this region of Rio de Janeiro. So uh, one of our main uh, uh, our main directions in, in this project is trying to produce, pro, produce information that could be useful towards the sustainable development of that region. That's the idea. And yes. we have some sensors and we have also all of this information available in a website also too. Yeah, so maybe Lohan was here. How could yes, we integrate? I, I mean, by yes, I, 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 I think that uh, Bayaviu is a nice initiative, but I'd like to add uh, more concerning uh, ship, concerning vessels. We, we, we construct four new vessels, shelf type vessels that are spread along the Brazilian coast. It's, it came from the Ministry of Education, uh, Ciencias do Mar, one, two, three, and four. One and the Maranhão, uh, all the four vessels are uh, located in the universities along the Brazilian coast. In the Maranhão, in Federal University of Maranhão, in Recife, 
and uh, Rio Grande and uh, in, in the Federal Fluminense University uh, in Rio de Janeiro. So this, this the last one I ar just arrived in Recife. I have a really new vessel, uh, well equipped, and I think this, this must represent a nice contribution from the, the western boundary, you know, for the coastal observations and the uh, marinet and coastal nets. And the most important now and uh, make the links, I, I would say. So, and to promote the links and to invite those people, those universities to be uh, on board, I would say. So we can construct that. Uh, and, you know, if you have platforms, we have uh, some kind of uh, more easy way to work on and to put people together. So this is another an additional, I would say, uh, input for, for Coastnet and Marinette as well. So how can, how can we link up, I mean, your initiative, Luis Paulo, with this, I mean, I mean this oceanographic vessel? Uh, it, it's, it's very important, but uh, Guanabara Bay project is a, is a very coastal project and it, it, it's, we are looking uh, directly towards the, the Bahia, uh, Guanabara Bay region. So it's very coastal, but we have also the, the participation of uh, University of the state of Rio de Janeiro. And they, I, I, I cannot talk about the indirect. Of course, I am a professor from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, not from the State University of Rio de Janeiro, but they participate in this project and they have a vessel also too, uh, an oceanographic vessel. I, I, I know that everybody from Brazil knows that, uh, and, and uh, maybe they could participate in integrating this, these initiatives. But uh, uh, the platform, uh, the digital platform, the Guanabara Bay project could be uh, also be, uh, today is, we are only looking at Guanabara Bay region, but we can spread uh, the, the, the area of interest of the project and replicate this project in other areas of the of the Brazilian coast also too. I don't know, uh, yeah. maybe it could be a, a, an opportunity to get yeah. integrated to help. Maybe Lohan could say something. Couldn't you, Lohan? Well, well, um, hello. Uh, I think I think it's interesting to have in uh, a, a coast net uh, all even if it's more, some uh, every coastal network that are acting in uh, every country part of the of the joint actions, and uh, you 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 saw the objective that we mentioned during the presentation about uh, coastnet. So I think that uh, every every networks that are doing some observations uh, in coastal areas are welcome to participate. Uh, in best practices, sharing, uh, training, and so on. So I don't see any problems to have more uh, coastal network that we have already. And, uh, uh, and Madame on the Moisir is more up, is more aware of how coastal observation is is organized in Brazil than me, because I am completely. Uh, uh, Unshaped, if <laughs> deformed in, in French by the European aspect uh, 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 of it. And uh, uh, I need to understand how it is organized in each country, part of the joint action, and it's very difficult. So, uh, what I, I would like to, to say is that uh, just uh, send, you, send us your uh, contact point and maybe a small description of uh, the coastal observation. Uh, uh, activity that you have in your area and uh, of, we will take it into account and if we are in for the next actions of the, of the ACOSNET initiative, you will be integrated in our brainstormings, workshops and in the more uh, uh, longer future, future in collaborative uh, proposal list of, um, establishment yeah good okay of course i mean it's the more we are the better it will be i think okay good we have to move on now i mean sure. sorry to be pressing we have half an hour a lot of questions a lot of people wanting to talk i mean maybe we could talk with eduardo 
I know Eduardo has to leave in a few minutes and then I will ask Philomena also to jump in. She's already connected. And then we will reply some action, uh, some questions. Uh, uh, Reiner will already reply the writing. Maybe he could elaborate on that. So Eduardo, could you say something? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ines Tech is responsible for developing uh, infrastructure for testing technology. I know you are guys from the side of the technology, but we are able to cooperate with this, the other infrastructures uh, related to, the, to, to, to the applications. Uh, actually, you, we have a, a boat, a 19 meters boat. It is only for the coastal things, but uh, is, 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 is mainly for testing technology until four kilometers deep. Uh, but we can also, um, our boat is small, but is, uh, the, the, the costs is more controlled uh, and we, we can go often to, to the sea because you have uh, money for that because the cost is, is less. And also we have some experience like we do in sail and we can replicate the experience we do with sail with uh, electrical field, uh, things uh, we do in the, in the circle navigation with, with the Sagres. We can help the people and replicate this type of things in other boats. And uh, be, uh, because it's not, it, everything is expensive. And we can also test some equipment in, the, in our lab for the people who want to want to develop new sensors. We can test these new sensors. We can help to integrate the new sensors in the boats or even in, in the robots, okay? And uh, our tech force is available to cooperate with the applications networks. We are, in our case, our infrastructure is for technology, but we, we would like to connect our infrastructure with inf applications infrastructures. And, and uh, 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 this um, event is important because we see a, a lot of the potential of the people before go and put something running in the in the in the in the, in the boats or in fleets or in the in the coastal areas. We can test and and help the people robustness the the, the, the system, and also we can use our boat or even if we, we can install things in other boats. And uh, you know better, you know like the. the what do we do in Sagres? And the, 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 the sensors work more than one year con continuously. And now we go to the new mission between uh, Lisbon, Funchal, um, some, uh, some city in the Soros, come to port, to port Lisbon. Uh, it, it, it is in the, in the Portugal waters, but it's also very interesting to, to replicate this experience in other boats, okay? And uh, I don't take more time, sorry, but uh, but I'm uh, I'm available to cooperate. You you can do the link with the, with the other guys with with us, and uh, I I appreciate a, a lot. Okay, good. Thank you so much, Eduard. This is the whole idea of this very first meet is to bring on board stakeholders to the network. And now I'd like to hear from Filomena. João Vitorino just said something. There are potential uh, mission in Angola. And uh, Filomena, she has a fantastic oceanographic vessel, Bahia Farta, in Angola. And maybe you could say something about your infrastructure. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Jose. Uh, it was just about Bahia Farta that uh, I want to talk to, to, to say something. You are willing to, to have the Bahia Farta in this network. Uh, for us also to gain uh, capacity because it's a 74 uh, uh, meters, the vessel is well equipped and it can be helpful for, for the region. Just to say the Bahia Fata today finished the, the tests for the winch and uh, we, we we hope that uh, at the middle of, at the end of the year the Bahia Fata is uh, ready to 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 be in the routine service. And uh, another aspect I I want to raise up is uh, Itapina project uh, program. I know that uh, Margo sent us an invitation to participate to participate in this program 
because we have the zoo scanning uh, in our institute. What you need is to gain the capacity and to have to use more the zoo, the, the zoo scanning. But you are, you are, you are, you, you wish to participate in this uh, program. Thank you very much. Okay, so João, any comments on on Philomena's, I mean, message? Yeah, yeah, we, we need to rapidly establish the, the link with the Philomena and the, the colleagues in, from Angola. Um, these ideas about the, the possibility of having a mission in Angola in 2022 give us some more extended uh, window to interact. So we started the interaction uh, for the mission in 2021 in Cap Verde, and then we uh, wanted to uh, develop the interactions uh, uh, in a more uh, longer time step. But now, uh, if eventually there is a, a, a possibility to do some uh, work already this year, that this needs to be uh, discussed rapidly um, in interaction with uh, Philomena and the, and the colleagues of Angola. So uh, I will, uh, we from IH will rapidly contact, enter in contact with the Philomena. Uh, once we have the confirmation about the possibility or not to do already this year something. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, so that will be I, I... very interesting to have, for example, a, a ship that is going to the area and interact with uh, the Bay of Arta, for example, and to try to articulate some work together. That, that could be a very, very interesting uh, uh, activity. Uh... I hope you can work together to be a very interesting outcome of this first workshop. We, so now maybe, maybe Reiner, can you reply to the questions that were asked on the chat box? You already replied them by writing, but now maybe we could share with us or elaborate a little bit more on the responses. Yes, uh, I, I would like to answer to Fabio's uh, question. I answered to Bjorn. Um, uh, yeah, how can uh, Itapina be integrated with CoastNet? I think uh, I don't see it as, as different projects. I rather see it that, that, you that there is the coastal and the uh, open ocean observing communities where you have ships, where you have coastal stations, and Itapina is more a transversal action where we, we are talking about uh, 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 like a technology that we would like to deploy everywhere. Uh, I mean, we have you, you are uh, people are measuring temperature everywhere and doing pelagic imaging is similar you can do it everywhere and it makes sense everywhere but maybe just share my, my screen to show show one thing um so here this is how uh, the, the ctd looked like during the last cruise and uh, that i was on and we had the underwater vision profiler in the ctd but of course we had the temperature salinity sensors nitrate nitride chlorophyll a acoustic zooplankton fish profiler. So everything integrated. And what I dream of is that uh, like in, in each cruise and on each vessel that, that was just mentioned that, that we have this also this pelagic imaging tools, which actually deliver digital data, which can be easily uh, analyzed or relatively easily be analyzed mm -hmm. from, uh, in, uh, like, like temperature data as well. Uh, on each cruise and on each vessel. And, and so that's one goal to promote this, to, uh, this technology. And, and it cannot only be used on vessels, it can also be put on moorings. You see me here with something that we put at the, at the mooring at the equator, but this can be also done on a coastal mooring, for example. And, and yeah, what I've shown, the, all the different instruments, they, they are, of course, uh, they, they have all the different purposes and, and uh, when you plan a cruise or something, talk also to us and, and maybe we can provide an instrument or give an idea what could be a useful instrument, especially also the planktoscope is something, the plants are open source, you can build it yourself and there's a community that actually uh, works on, on creating such open source uh, tools now for pelagic imaging and, and also this is maybe especially interesting for everyone to, to learn about this and to learn that, that these tools exist and that they they are I, I think we will we will be, it, it will be a credible 10, 20 years now to, to really use and, and grow the community and and to um, to pelagic imaging everywhere and to especially to also work on integrating the data. Of course if everyone has a tool somewhere and everyone has the data only on his personal computer then that doesn't help. 
but we can integrate everything and we can put them on servers and, and work together on, on combining the data and get, get a, a, a all Atlantic picture of what, what is in the water. Yeah. Thank you. You are muted now. Sorry about that, yeah. So uh, before going to Bjorn Fiedler that he would like to say something about the, the Coast Guard vessel. Uh, and I mean, I'd like just to, to say that uh, Juan Tasso, I mean, will include some potential synergies with Marinette in the next meeting of, the, of his El Marino Robotics Research Infrastructure. Maybe, João, if you want to, you, can, you could say some words afterwards, if you raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, we'll, we'll move to Bjorn. Bjorn is already, now you have a panelist, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for this opportunity. I just wanted to add to uh, the other reports from other places about ships of opportunity and uh, I can just report from developments in Cabo Verde where we are have teamed up with the Coast Guard in order to join forces to have uh, one vessel that uh, can be can be used for different purposes and uh, and now we um, are in the face of equipping that vessel uh, together with local partners and with some support from Monaco to equip that vessel with uh, um, oceanographic equipment, which is a hydrographic winch and which is a brand new fully equipped CTD for being able to carry out uh, hydrographic work down to 3000 meters water depth. And that vessel is uh, from 2014, 50 meter long, can uh, host also up to, I think, nine people on board. and. It can be, you know, used and made available to the community as part of this initiative or other others, and it can be even can even operate also uh, in West African uh, um, waters, uh, mainland countries. So, just wanted to to advertise that, and uh, it would be great if we could all come together and share the infrastructure. So, it's a really great initiative. Okay, thank you. A lot of. Uh offers now for start sharing some networks. And uh, I've also seen here, I mean, Niam Flavin, Flavin I, actually, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I, I guess I'm not doing anything wrong. I mean, he was, let's say, uh, uh, provoked by Nicole to say something about Eurofleet. So he's saying that his offer from access to research vessels, Eurofleet is promoting remote transnational access to all Eurofleet research vessels. Could you comment on that? I mean, Nicole? Yes, it was a bit interesting for me because Eurofleet is the EU funded initiative running for 12 years now and incredibly successful. And um, it's a anchor is also a EU funded initiative and it always shows us that the EU is not very well communicating because one is infrastructure unit and one is uh, research and innovation unit so Eurofleet I don't know if Neef it you you pronounce her name Neef I had to learn also wants to say something but especially for work in the Atlantic Ocean there is a lot of there are a lot of vessels uh, available and not only from Europe. And as I try to stress with uh, my uh, short presentation for a rise in the Arctic where US and Canada are fully funded, it is also an opportunity for our Southern hemisphere partners to be involved with their vessel in such a network, if it continues, that's of course the prerequisite, even but, but with funding from the European Commission. So uh, with incentives, that's why I heavily promoted Eurofleet because so many ships are involved and it's such a long-term endeavor already where all the big European uh, nations and cooperation partners are involved. But maybe Neve wants to add something. Jose? So, yes, Nif? yes. Uh, Nim, Nim is connecting now. Yes, okay. So if you can. 
Apologies. I think when when you were promoting me to panelist, it dropped out for a minute, so I missed the the last piece of what Nicole said. But yes, I mean, I, I put it in the chat about the remote transnational access, but there's other opportunities with Eurofleets, such as COPI as well, where um, a scientist can join an already funded crew. So th there's so many opportunities. Um, and for the remote transnational access, um, that can be any Eurofleet's vessel, of which we have 27. So there's so many opportunities. And some of our vessels do operate in the mid and South Atlantic as well. So really, you know, we have really good coverage and you can apply for a day's access there to possibly maybe deploy some equipment or to collect some data samples um, or some physical samples. So we would be really keen to be um, connected with a Marinette and, and to work together so that we can really, what we're looking to do in our aim in Eurofleet is to increase the impact of each funded cruise. So to get as many um, uh, disciplines and to get as many scientists involved, so true COPI or true RTA, so that we can really, so for each funded cruise, that you have maximum impact from the money that the European Commission is investing in each cruise. Okay, thank you so much for your offer. More than welcome here. Okay. Thank and you thank so you, much. Thank you, Nicole, and thank you for a great workshop. It's, it's, yeah. it's been very interesting. Yeah, so Moacir, you wanted to say something before I interrupted you? No, no, no. Just, just remarking that uh, I think that we, we have a, a very important task for the development and management group already, making the link to Aerofleet and the uh, all others uh, initiative that we saw here. That that's only about what I would like to to remark. Okay, good. So it's very interesting. You already started a lot of offers. <laughs> it yeah. really sounds like this TV program. Yes. Where I ask money from the public. Please call 800 something something and give us two, two euros per call. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a good, it's a good start, I would say. And yeah. Good beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So we have a very long question here from Agibu from, from Nigeria. Actually, two questions. He asked first, I mean, if you. you we will hold some uh, workshops in Nigeria. I will contact you later on because for sure we want to do that. Okay, so how can we organize and start to link up with the research infrastructures in Nigeria? But uh, so there is another, there are actually three other questions. Uh, who wants to, you, you all panelists can read the questions. Who wants to, wants to, to take one or more of these questions? Any one of you, I mean, basically, uh, how to maintain the long term of a network also autonomous measurements in uh, north coast of Gulf of Guinea. Any take on that? Well, uh, this is Laurent Delaunay speaking. Um, we all have the same problem <laughs> in every country. <laughs> The long term, these, these two words are very hard to handle when, it's, uh, when it concerns uh, observation systems. And uh, in Europe, uh, there is a mechanism called uh, ERIC, EU, European Research Infrastructure Consortium, that is trying to uh, help to, 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 to organize and to structure some uh, sustainable um, entities, some sustainable um, how could say organization in order to uh, to take care of a specific uh, observation domain, and uh, for example, uh, I can say some names that maybe you know uh, in terms of ERIC is that EMSO is dedicated to uh, to seafloor observation in uh, in Europe, and uh, Eurofleet is an ERIC. It's, it's not an ERIC. No, no, it's not a, It's not an ERIC. That's right. So. There is uh, Euro Argo, that, that is uh, the ERIC dedicated to floats, uh, that is the European entity of uh, Argo, the, 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 the global uh, floats uh, uh, thing. So the answer is not easy because uh, as you can see, uh, I can tell you that to become an ERIC uh, in, a, in, a, in Europe, it's a very rare, rare, rare big, 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 big piece of cake, if I can say. It's, it's, it's as setting up uh, an, uh, an enterprise, a company. 
you have to set up all the aspect of a company and uh, there are some the preparation of the eric is funded by you by europe but when you are launched uh, and you are accredited as an eric uh, you must try to try to try to find some funds by yourself and uh, at the national level where uh, where with the country that participates to that eric and so on so i, I want to say that for me the only a uh, solution to manage to be long term it's to be able to find some phones some successive phones to stay alive it's it's how is life <laughs> i'm sorry there is no magic uh, solutions and it's it's why these joint actions are that i'm talking about the ah cosnet we we have in mind to to take advantage of this of this network in order to to apply for funding um, at the appropriate in the appropriate goal in order to try to uh, to to last longer than the duration of the uh, cosnet joint actions. So I'm crossing my fingers and I hope that th all these initiatives are mined, cosnet and so on. We will have the time to consolidate the 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 network in order to build up some nice proposals to be found. Yes, thank you so much. I mean, we have, I mean, we still have more questions coming, people asking to participate. I mean, I, I know that Carlos Barreras from uh, Plocan may wait some, may want to say something. If you want to say something, Carlos, please raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, we will we'll, we'll go to, I mean, the final round of uh, of uh, of comments because if, unfortunately we have to really close at three o'clock because the main event will start 50 minutes after we close this event and i have to be there in the, first, the main event so so maybe we could i mean make a a, a final round you no know? start from where we we began and try to close so florence do you want to say something I take this opportunity to, 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 to jump on this issue of funding. Of course, I don't have the solution, but uh, I want to remind that uh, these joint actions, AA Marinette, uh, will benefit from seed funding from, from, uh, from the European Commission, because after it was adopted by the Belém co-chairs, which means we have some funding to kick off activities. It's already something to create the networks. This is what we will do with the three thematic areas we, we presented. And also to kick off the website as well. Um, and, and then we are also working, of course, to pursue activities on the longer term uh, with the support also of the Air Center that you represent today, Jose. So that yeah. was just uh, uh, an additional piece of information regarding funding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Stay there because you close the session. Let's move on to to Moisir. Want to say something? Yes. Yes. Very quickly. Uh, uh, first, some some words uh, about the long term. I think that uh, we will not be able to be everywhere. That's sure. But uh, we should be and we will be uh, driven by science and societal benefits. So if you can identify and maximize both of those uh, issues, I think that we can find what is really important to, to support in a long-term basis. So this is, is uh, in my opinion, this is how you work and we should work concerning long-term. And uh, finally, I would like to thank uh, Jose, Florence, uh, Lohan, and all group uh, for this night side uh, event that you had today and yesterday, both of them. I think that we're kicking off uh, the community group, uh, in my opinion, yesterday and today. And uh, you, you have a lot of opportunity uh, from now on for integrating coastal observing system I, I was very impressed, Nicole, for the, the polar, polar presentation. And we had a very nice discussion with Jefferson and people from the Brazilian Antarctic Program. And uh, it's very good to see that. And we work together. 
And uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, keep you safe and let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before going to John Vitorino, I just want to say that I just received a, uh, a WhatsApp message from Marcelo Ronick from the Federal University of Pará. He developed uh, in the observatory of the Amazon coast. And see, he's also, I mean, want, wants to link uh, with the A coast net, you know, and see how can they, you work, to, we can work together. Okay, so another offer, this is really good. So to João Vitorino. Just rapidly to say that uh, the expectations are high because this, uh, all these days and also yesterday with the sessions, there are a lot of interest for interaction and for uh, participating uh, from the from the web portal uh, perspective. Uh, ex expecting a, a very uh, intense uh, interaction now during the design phase and implementation. So I hope that probably by mid July we can have an opportunity to um, for the design uh, concept of the website to interact with different uh, partners, um, but also for this uh, case studies uh, uh, approach. Um, I think there is a very interesting uh, opportunities here to uh, put together uh, groups uh, to uh, collaborate each other and to uh, give a very nice uh, um, overview of the potential for articulation uh, actions. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you so much, João. And now we are going to Laurent. Do you want to say well, some words, I, final I, words? Yeah. Yes, I, I think I already said the words that need that are needed to be said <laughs> uh, just previously. I, I was a bit long, so I don't want to use all some more time. I think uh, let's believe it. It will be a, um, a piece of cake to manage it, but we have to federate all the all the coastal network of these country all together and to try to uh, to harmonize, to integrate and to work all together to facilitate the land sea continuum through the Atlantic. Perfect. So now to you know, Nicole. You want to see some only, a few, yeah. only a few words. Uh, first of all, I enjoyed the session very much. Thank you very much. Um, and I have to say, this is a real challenging endeavor I learned because so many initiatives and some very important, not even mentioned like Goose and Euro Goose and so on and so on. So I don't want to be in your role to bring this all together, let's say. As for the polar community, I can say we have, it is also challenging to connect two communities who developed a bit side by side. But uh, we are very happy to work with you and uh, also to include our experience and our infrastructure in this network. And I can only tell you, I am not a polar scientist, but working in the polar areas is really fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I will do the same comment. I'm not from infrastructure, but I, you know, Florence is the main cause. I mean, getting completely addicted to infrastructure right now, research infrastructure. <laughs> so, um, final, I mean, some comments from Rainer, and then we'll go back to Florence. Yeah, I think uh, Moa already uh, made very good remarks, and I can only just add to it that it's it's fun to do doing this research, fun uh, to working with all of you in the all Atlantic community. And uh, yeah, uh, let's do it together. Let's imagine we can do it and we can uh, work uh, all over the place and uh, make the world a better place. Yeah. Fantastic. So before leaving the floor to Florence for, to close the session, I, I myself, I'm, I'm very grateful for you all for inviting me to participate in this project. And I'll do the best, my best to help you out to really succeed in the Marinette. And now please close the session, Florence. Thank you, Jose. I just want to thank everyone for participating. Thank you, especially for being so enthusiastic. Uh, there are high expectations, but uh, there is also a lot of will. So I'm sure we can, we can do it. And uh, that was only a kickoff of the network, uh, a small kickoff, and there is much work to do if everybody is aware of that. <laughs> so we'll be in touch together very soon in uh, joining all our 
different scientific communities. Thank you very much. Okay, so bye to you. Thank you so much for the participation of everybody. Merci beaucoup. Sure, Thank you. Thank you all. Nice to Thank see you. you. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank see you, you soon. <laughs>